players, one of them Oleg Selenko, refused to play under coach Pavel Sadarin in the World Cup. After they'd qualified, they signed a letter demanding Sadarin's dismissal. But although Selenko was a signatory, he changed his mind and said yes to America. Eight players, including Kanchelskis of Manchester United and Kiriakov of Karlsruhe, continued to say no and didn't go. I don't think we made a mistake by not taking part in the World Cup. We just kept our word. We really wanted to be a strong team, but the people in charge of the team at that time didn't want us to play. I'm still sure we did the right thing. In America, the weakened Russians lost first to Brazil and then to Sweden. Already virtually eliminated, they met Cameroon. Oleg Selenko, who'd started the tournament as substitute, turned it into a one-man show. He scored five times a record for a single game in the finals. And though there was to be no more progress for the team despite their 6-1 victory, he gave them back some pride. Everyone was talking of Selenko as the rising star of Russian football. It was the highest score ever for a Russian team in the World Cup. And at the same time, it was by far the biggest achievement in my career. Five goals in one match, nobody had ever managed to do that before. I was really lucky it happened at the World Cup too. It made me a real star. But in the future, I'm going to have to live up to this image. Selenko comes from the Ukraine, but began his career in Russia's second city at Zenit Leningrad. There he was involved in a player rebellion for the first time. The victim won Pavel Sadarin, who had to quit the job. It didn't help Zenit, and after relegation, he moved to Dynamo Kiev, whose great days had long since been left behind. Like many Russians, he went abroad to lowly Spanish club Le Grognier. But in his first season in Spain, he was a success. He was the club's top scorer with 16 goals in 30 games and was highly respected. Just before the World Cup, he was signed by Valencia. And after his performance in the States, hopes were high, especially with the Brazilian coach Carlos Alberto Pereira also arriving. But the World Cup winning coach was a realist about Selenko's ability. He scored five goals in one match. He's obviously a good player, but not the world's best. He came from a small team, but here the demands are greater and he is still in the phase of adapting himself to them. He's a good player and striker, although technically not exceptional compared with most players. The pressure was on and Selenko couldn't live up to expectations. In his first performances for Valencia, he looked tired and luck wasn't good to him. When Lubislav Penev came back into the team after a long injury, Selenko found himself on the bench. It's a very difficult situation psychologically. Every time I play, I'm expected to score, and that's a real strain. People are saying that I'm not playing very well if I don't score, even if the team wins, and they make sure I know all about it. But for me, the most important thing is that we win, whether I score or not. With Valencia in mid-table, Pereira's position is under threat, and Selenko is now being courted by the J-League. And it's not only in Valencia where he's out of favour. The new Russian coach, Oleg Romantsev, refuses even to talk about him. I think it's time to stop talking about this because we've all had a little bit too much of it, especially me. You may remember that Lobanovsky would not use the most talented player of my time, Fedor Cherenkov. He just didn't suit his concept of the game. Every coach has his own ideas. I don't play Mostovoy either. He's a great player and he plays for Sparta. But we're in good terms, as I am with Selenko. There is no misunderstanding. But there are other theories. Many couldn't forget that Selenko went back on his word after signing the letter against Sadirin. I believe that the coach has to decide who plays in the national team. But I don't hide my opinion. I didn't like the situation with Selenko. I cannot mix with him or talk to him anymore. But I reiterate that only the coach, in my opinion, has the right to make a decision on who should or should not play. 
точек на сегодняшний день сильнее. So the golden boot is a souvenir from a particularly ironic year. It's a big problem for me with the Russian team. We have a new coach who is trying to build a new team, but many people in Russia don't understand why I'm not playing. And frankly, neither do I.